this kid. It, it irritates well, I want to finish. I, I wasn't done. Well, I'm not going to talk I anymore got... is what I'm saying, so I'm going to take a few minutes and just cool down. <laughs> Roger that. Well, Dylan, i got to go ahead and ask this. I, I, I've been seeing Colts fans ask for refunds for piece of season tickets. That's probably the most fair-weather fanship I've ever seen is – just because your quarterback's retiring, I mean, if Rodgers came out and retired, I would not act like that. I'm sorry. I would be fully behind his decision. I know if Wentz did it, I know you'd be behind his decision. So I can't really sit, sit there and get mad for, for, for like, what is it, for luck retiring on that because it's not like he came out and was trying to screw over the fans. And the fans to ask that, that's just completely ridiculous. Well, yeah, I mean, you got garbage people out there, man. I mean, it's just the way it is. When <laughs> when Le'Veon sat out last year, there are people all over his Twitter page. Uh, I remember because when of Mac fantasy. Miller died. Who cares? Yeah, I remember when, like, when Mac Miller died, Le'Veon put up a, a post in grievance, and people even got on that post saying, what the hell, man, you need to get out on the field and dedicate it to Mac Miller. So, yeah, there's just yeah, dude, people out there. there. These are people, and that's the thing. Like, they're not just football players. They are people. That's why I have so much happiness that Luck retired the way he did because of the fact that he's a person. He is comfortable where he's at in life. And people kept saying, oh, it's because of the millions. I'm like, no, he's got a new wife. He's got a baby on the way. That's enough for him. Yeah, you like, that's, yeah. It's because of the new wife. He's retiring because of his new wife, people. I don't know who else is going to say it, but I'm going to say it right here and now. His new wife I agree with is that. tired. Uh, not living the life of luxury with her man at home. He's always miserable. He's always rehabbing. He's not getting the star quarterback treatment. Everyone's just waiting to see him succeed. And now, finally, the pressure has pushed her to the limit. She's always on his case, and he just has had it. He's taking his million, and he's going out to the woods with his wife. And do you guys... <laughs> Do you guys follow this page on Twitter, Captain Andrew Luck? Yes, it's amazing. Yeah, oh but my now God. it's Captain this Derek page. Carr. Really? Actually, there's also Captain Dakota Prescott, too. They made that one, too. Uh, people, the internet is beautiful. I love people. I mean, <laughs> My favorite is course, Brigadier yeah. General Aaron Rodgers. That's my favorite. I'm sorry. Especially writing Dear Danica. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, man. You got trolls, you got a hole, but then you got guys like Captain Andrew Luck. Here's the latest uh, tweet: "Dearest mother, the quill has never felt more heavy. <laughs> I have made the decision to holster my sidearm permanently. I shall battle no more. The decision is difficult, but as the hog taught me, I must be true to myself. I am coming home to care for you and the farm, Andrew. I mean, come on." It, that's amazing. It's pure gold. And, and the fact we can't see Captain Andrew Luck anymore really bothers <laughs> me because we're going to have certain other, like military quarterbacks doing it. But I, Captain Andrew Luck was one of my favorites. I know. Unfortunately, this, uh, this Twitter account only lasted not even as long as the Mueller report. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Hey. <laughs> you are mad, well, you know what? I I feel like we need some uh, fantasy files coming up. I think we need to move on something, something a uh, little, a little more positive. The players are out there. What do you got for us today on fantasy files, Dylan? Okay, so aside of the small news that is Andrew Luck, we do have a few things out there. Dave, you heard that rumors are swirling around the Eagles as far as the Debbie and Clowney goes, which I have seen those headlines. I don't think it's likely, though. I think the Eagles are going to stick with their current rotation, and they've got a few young guys that they want to develop. I am reading, however, via the Sleeper app, that the Dolphins are very interested in Clowney. So we'll see if he met with Florida, I believe, right? What's that? He met with Flores and the other Dolphins brass, right? Oh, is that so? Okay. So, yeah. They're, they yeah, I was reading that earlier. 
time me and say throw a first round out there, then obviously the Dolphins are going to have a high first round draft pick. So we'll see what happens with that. I mean, Jay, you got into the whole subject of uh, his contract situation, so we don't need to dig any uh, deeper into that. Um, as far as practices and injuries go, uh, I guess Deshaun Jackson suffered a broken ring finger on his left hand in a workout. But he's not expected to miss any time, and the team is not concerned. Um, for you Josh Dockton dynasty owners, apparently he's not a lock for the 53-man roster. I'm not exactly sure who they plan on throwing out there besides Terry McLaurin and Paul Richardson. But Doc Alvin Harmon, main working for North Carolina State. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got Harmon out there, so... We'll see what he can bring to the table. Uh, I know they named Case Keenum the starter. We'll see how long that lasts. I mm. mentioned the pressure is going to mount. Um, if, if the Redskins lose two games, even uh, the first two games, I see Haskins getting put in there pretty quick. But uh, keep your eyes on Josh Jackson. Maybe a fresh start in a new team is, is exactly what he needs. Was he a get first rounder first. last year? Not last year, but he was a first rounder, I think, two years ago. Two Man, years ago. talk about a letdown. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of talent. We'll see what happens there. Um, Redskins, I mean, to be honest, they've had a history of not developing some, some high draft picks as far as receivers go. But uh, as far as Detroit Lions go, they released fan favorite Zach Zenner. So Zenner's out there on the wire, ready to be picked up by perhaps a team like the Houston Texans, who, because of the Andrew Maybe. Luck news, <laughs> uh, yeah, because of the Andrew Luck, news. Um, a big another piece of news like the Lamar Miller injury who had a torn ACL. He will miss the entire season. So right now Duke Johnson, he recently acquired Duke Johnson is in line to pick up the snacks down there in Houston. Obviously has the hand to handle passing work. Um, the question is can he be a three down back? Can he get in there on the goal line and be a real steal as far as fantasy goes? Um, we'll see what happens with Duke Johnson's ADP. It's, it's huge. I mean, most people have drafted this past weekend, but plenty of people are going to be drafting this upcoming weekend. It's a huge weekend. So guys like Duke Johnson, guys like Josh Gordon, um, you know, some recent news to keep your eyes on as far as those guys go because the Patriots have cut Maurice Harris. He was a training camp favorite. A lot of people had their eyes on Maurice Harris early on with all the buzz coming out around training camp with him. He's out. So now as far as New England wide receivers go, you've got Edelman, you've got Josh Gordon, you've got a guy they like in Jacoby Myers. Obviously, Philip Dorsett is still there. So we'll see how that rotation plays out. But obviously, um, Edelman and Gordon are the guys to own. It's still talented wide receiver roster. It's, I mean, to have Edelman and Gordon alone, it reminds me a lot of uh, Wes Welker and Randy Moss. I mean, if you don't mind me saying Ooh, little little name drop comparison. Well, it's true. I mean, they both do the same thing. So, Dylan, um, I, got, little bit of, I got a real it, quick question for you because this news had come up while you were gone, and it's been still circulating. There's supposedly Brian Gunekunst is out looking for a premier running back in the trade market for the Green Bay Packers. I have been trying to scour, other than the obvious, like, name out there because I think the Texans would be in the market even though that's same in the same conference for uh, Melvin Gordon who who is a premier running back that would be available for trade taking Melvin Gordon out of it like I just I just can't like wrap my head around is who you who you would consider it from a GM standpoint this in day and age other than you know, the obvious two, which is Ezekiel Elliott and Melvin Gordon. So can you help maybe give some people some ideas? Because they're not putting names out there, so everybody's just kind of reaching and guessing. Maybe some ideas, Dylan. Help us. Man, you know, as far as names that would really turn your head, I guess I could see a guy like Kenyon Drake, who hasn't really panned out for the Dolphins as of yet. You know, he's shown flashes. But if they believe in Kalen Balazs, if they are trying to rebuild, I guess I could see a guy like Kenyon Drake on the market. Um, what do you think about a sexy name like Drake? Well, the problem is, is I guess I'm, I'm stuck on the, the way that uh, Rob Demosky reported this. And correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. 
was basically he used the word premiere. When I hear premiere, I think of Todd Gurley, even though he's on his way down because of his arthritis that ain't going to get better. Uh, Melvin Gordon, Ezekiel Elliott, you know, like back in the day, you got like Adrian Peterson. But like, premiere's a hard word, I, man. I just thought of one. Around. Well, I'll say what Katie one McCoy. does come to mind. Um, but he, he just doesn't make much sense for the Packers. But what do you think of Shady McCoy? Yep, that's what I was just going to say. That's I think Dave just said that, and that he would from he would fit that bill, and I think he's but he's older, so I mean, yeah, I, I mean it's I a good thinking. idea. I mean, but he is a thirty-year-old running back that is you know is on his way down too. Do you want to trade an asset? I think the idea is he younger. also might not cost as much as the other younger premier running backs, and might give us a year or two that could benefit. Yeah, I mean that's that's what you got to ask yourself is what is the GM, what is everyone in the front office looking for? I mean, if they're looking to capitalize on the Super Bowl window that is Aaron Rodgers, then yeah, a guy like Shady does make sense. Um, otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't be investing too much into a position that's <laughs> certainly brought up a lot of controversy as of late as far as their value. Actually, I've got another one too I've been thinking of because he seems like he can't crack the top starting spot in his team, and he's still a young guy, so if we trade for him, he still wouldn't cost a lot compared to other running backs. Ronald Jones in Tampa might just need to change the, change the scenery. Uh, yeah, I did. I thought of him too, actually. He has been on kick. I've been watching. I watched the, the third preseason game with the Bucks playing the Browns. He was out there on kick returns. He took some snaps with the, the first team with Jameis. And, you know, I just, he's a, he's a bounce to the outside guy. He hasn't learned to take what's on the inside yet. I mean, Peyton Barber gets tough yards, and it doesn't look pretty, but second and seven looks a lot better than second and ten. Any coach will tell you that. Well, I mean, we run a lot of Packers sweep, and we run to the outside a lot. So Ronald Jones could benefit us there and then keep Jones running between the tackles. That's true. And, I mean, Bruce Arians did bring on – uh, Ellington for a reason. He trusts Ellington in the mm-hmm. fast catching game. Uh, Peyton Barber's handling the early down work. And was he Ellington the coach was, when uh, Ellington was in Arizona? He was. He was. Oh, that's the connection. Okay. Yeah, that's the connection. So he trusts Ellington. <laughs> they also like this Daria Gumbawale out of Wisconsin um, to be a pass catching running back. So I think the Bucks are going to have a pretty good backfield. I just don't like it. Let me let me uh, let me clarify. The Bucks have talented running backs. They do not have a talented offensive line. Uh, as we yeah. got play against the Browns. Holy cow, Jay. Jameis got beat up. I think he had three or four sacks and ten knockdowns in in one half. He got slaughtered. When I was I was listening to the broadcast, and just for kicks, the commentators decided to. Um, do the statistics on if the amount of sacks panned out for the entire season. And it was ridiculous. It was supposed to be like 200 sacks for the season. I mean, the Bucks got to get that. <laughs> yeah. The Bucks got to get that line from six. Or a guy David like Carr, eat your heart out. Yeah. David Carr, Deshaun Watson. I mean, you got nothing on Jameis this year. I, and it, it, it really impacts fantasy. I mean, guys are counting on Chris Godwin, uh, O.J. Howard, to really step up and help their fantasy Cameron Bray. Yeah, even Cameron Bray. I mean, he's a guy you can put in your flex every now and again and maybe get a touchdown out of him. So they need to protect Jameis, so it's going to be real ugly. So let's put money down. He's out on week six by IR. (laughs) Or uh, just gets into trouble. I mean, who knows? Yeah, true. Um, Actually... I got to bring up something else for it may pertain some fantasy files. Uh, yeah. Does Carly Lloyd get a shot at being a kicker in a preseason game? It looks like she received an offer to kick in, in a preseason game. Do you think she takes it? And do you think she could make a roster? You know, the one of my favorite things about you is the things that you support and the things that you condemn in life, it always just blows my mind the way the wind blows with you. 
But uh, <laughs> I'm all for Carly getting a shot and kicking.